Ford Aleswell, the last temp keep we need to crown old Mary Dominion Emperor. I'm comfortably at the top of our leaderboard. Might this be it? Will I finally get that one achievement that I never even dreamed I'd get? The inner gate opens and we rush our way in. We have to hurry, because two of our other amp keeps are already under attack by enemy forces. We fight our way to the back flag and flip it. Now it's just the first flag left. One last flag before I'm crowned and a horde grind comes to a successful end. But then, more Covenant reinforcements come in. From the side doors, from the inner gate, I see my teammates dying around me until I too see that famous blue screen of death. I tripped at the finish line. Had I just missed a golden opportunity to be crowned Emperor? The Emperor title, that rare honor bestowed upon the player good enough to be at the top of the Cerdol leaderboard and then conquer all six ring keeps to crown themselves. The ultimate glory in PvP, and surely one of the most difficult titles to get in ESO. Or is it? It depends. ESO has been out for a solid 8 years now and during that time there have been many players who managed to crown themselves Emperor. These days, if you play Cyrodiil for half an hour, you're bound to run into a few former Emperors or Empresses and there's no guarantee they'll actually be any good at PvP. Some former Amps fight with the ferocity that the title radiates, while many more will melt like snow at the Pergama Way Shrine. And it kind of makes sense. After all, to become Emperor, all you need to do is earn enough Alliance points, or AP, to be at the top of the leaderboard. You can earn AP not only by fighting, but also by simply being present when a keep or resource is being taken, by defending your own keeps, and even just by repairing keep walls. Of course, the better you are at PvP, the easier it becomes to earn AP, but more than anything, leaderboard position represents time invested rather than skill or IQ points used to overcome the enemy. And then there's the cheese. While the traditional grind for Emperor means no life in the game for 30 days, there are several less time-consuming alternatives. Many get their title in Ice Reach, the all but dead campaign for characters under level 50. Others get it a few hours into a new campaign, or one of the extra campaigns available only during the White Strikes Mayhem PvP event. Some players get carried by a guild, while others go as far as to pay tons of gold or even actual money to let someone else log into their account and get it for them. This is against TOS by the way and also very stupid and pointless so don't do it, but uh, the point is that there are so many ways to get M that a title doesn't necessarily mean anything. At least, that's what I always told myself and others, and while it's true I also really wanted that achievement, because it would be a sort of crowning effort of my journey through ESO's PvP. You see, I am not a PvPer by nature. In fact, I started playing ESO because I got tired of waiting for a new Elder Scrolls game, and at first I just wanted to do the quests while avoiding uh, all and any interactions with other players. And that's largely how I spent my first year in the game, just doing quests, having no real idea what I was even doing, but enjoying the experience regardless. I did have an interest in certain achievements, especially for the titles they came with. As I was bad at the game and made no real effort to improve, every achievement was a struggle at the start. I remember wearing that Savior of Marwyn title with pride when I finally got a guildie to help me clear the Vardenfell public dungeon group events. Then I noticed there were two titles that required me to go into Cyrodiil, namely Savior of Nern for clearing all the Dolvins, and Tamriel Hero for doing all the quests. Cyrodiil is ESO's PvP zone and there was no way in oblivion I was going to subject myself to that. So. I accepted the idea that I would never get these titles, and I stuck to it for a good week before I said screw it and went in there to clear all dolmens on a build that at the time struggled to even clear overland mobs. It took me an entire evening of running and crouching across a giant map of Cyrodiil, as well as a tragic death or two, but I did it. As a non-PvP potato, this experience was stressful, but it taught me two things. One. If I set my mind to it, I can do something in this game that I didn't think would be possible. 2. PvP is kind of interesting in this game. That early game experience planted the first seed that would eventually lead to me carefully trying out under 50 PvP until eventually taking the leap to the big leagues. This was a process that took multiple years and during that time I'd had similar experiences of thinking something was impossible, only to do it a little while later doing my first veteran DLC dungeon, getting my first dungeon skin, getting my first veteran Millstrom Arena clear, getting Flawless Conqueror title. 
Maybe not the most amazing achievements in the game, but remember that I went into ESO never having played an MMO and just wanting to do quests for the story. And so it went on in PvP. Whether it was getting some cool sounding battleground titles or climbing in rank in Cerdo, I just kept looking for new challenges, new obstacles to overcome. By the summer of 2021, I was a full-time PvPer and I'd gotten my main character all the way to Grand Overlord, the maximum alliance rank of 50. Like most PvP achievements, max alliance rank just represents time invested. But it was still a big moment for me, as it was not something I'd have thought possible even a year earlier. So, after defying my own expectations yet again, there was only one challenge left. The Emperor achievement was a bridge too far though. I have a job and something that resembles a life, and even if I didn't have those things, I could think of more valuable ways to spend my time than no life in Cyrodiil for an entire month. I've seen frankly clueless players get the achievement, simply by virtue of not locking off, so why should I even waste my time trying to compete with that? Still, the prospect of Emperor being this final hurdle, this last great challenge, was somehow very alluring to me and it never really left my mind. If I managed to somehow get it, it would be the ultimate proof I needed that I can do something as long as I put my mind to it. This may seem like a dumb notion for a video game achievement that ultimately does not matter, but I'm someone who's always had a lot of self-doubt, and crazy or sad as it sounds, it's experiences like this that can actually teach me a few lessons about myself that I can then use in those areas of life that do matter. One such lesson is that I'm a quitter. After a few months of the idea of getting this achievement lingering in my mind, I did my first serious Emperor attempt in the fall of 2021, at the start of a new campaign. I started out really well and actually topped the leaderboard for about an hour, but by the time the last ring keep was being sieged for the crowning, I'd fallen back to like third or fourth place. And while I told myself I would just keep playing for the entire day to see how far I'd get, I just logged off and went to do a bit of non-consequential zerging on PCNA. Screw it, I'll try again the next time Mitchell Mayhem comes around. So, in January of 2022, it was time for my second serious attempt. Mitchell Mayhem, now called White Strikes Mayhem, would hopefully provide me with the opportunity to get Amp a bit easier, as I would play on one of the extra 7-day campaigns. And boy, was I in for a treat. Again, I managed to get to the top of the leaderboard fairly quickly, but PvP there was tough. My faction was chronically outnumbered, so after the initial chaos had settled, there was little for me and my friends to do other than taking resources and outposts until hordes of enemies arrived. So once again, I had started out well, but around midnight the prospect of a day one crowning was far far away, and I was having a rather miserable time. The map was populated by enemy small scalers who shut down any attempt by my faction to gain ground. To add to the festivities, I was overtaken on the leaderboard by another player, who seemed to increase the gap slowly but steadily. I concluded that this was looking too grim for me to continue, and once again, I quit. While my pessimism is definitely a bad trait, it did turn out to be warranted this time around, as a friend told me that the campaign I'd picked at random had also been used by guild groups as the carry campaign of choice, so there was probably little I could have done as a solo player with only a few friends to help me. By this point, it did seem to me that the Emperor achievement was beyond my reach. I lacked the willpower to grind for days or even weeks without any guarantee that my work was actually going to pay off. So if I was ever going to get it, I would either have to be carried in a legal way or I would have to somehow lock into it. But a grind like this? Never again. Fast forward to many months later. It was Wednesday, the 12th of October 2022, the start of a new campaign on Ravenwatch, my home campaign. I'm playing my Templar with no real goal in mind for this campaign, other than to make some nice progress towards the max alliance rank for this character. Sure, alliance rank doesn't really matter, but it gives me a long-term goal to work towards and hey, I like having 5 stars above my name. A day after the campaign starts, I get sick and I have trouble sleeping, so I decide to fight the boredom a bit by joining for morning PvP. It's easy enough AP and there seem to be some nice non-laggy fights around. This continues into the weekend, and by Saturday I notice that I'm actually not doing terrible in the leaderboards. I'm in 5th place or so, and except for the player in the number 1 spot, who's way ahead of everyone, I'm not actually too far behind the rest. Ah well, I can never catch that player number 1, unless he stops playing, but he'll probably just keep right. Oh, wait a minute, did he just abandon the campaign? That's right, the one player who had seemed out of my reach had left the campaign, so now I was ranked like 4th, 
maybe 700 or 800 K AP behind the leader. Still a considerable gap, but no longer in the realm of pure impossibility. The prospect of this actually scared me a bit. I never really attempted to go on another Emperor grind, but now that I'd found myself in this scenario, I had a daunting choice to make. I could choose to commit fully in the hope that I'd be able to catch up, but this would require me to play more, much more than I'd enjoy, with one of the potential rewards being another huge disappointment should the players ahead of me keep at it as well. I could of course quit now and save myself from this grind. I could just have a drink, play some other games, listen to some podcasts, you know, have some actual fun. But I just knew that if I take a look at the leaderboard near the end of the campaign, and the top score looked like something I could easily have achieved, I'd be kicking myself for the rest of my ESO career. Besides, what if more players abandon the campaign? There was no real option. I would have to commit and just pray that I'd be more lucky than during my prior attempts. So on I went. This run was different from my previous ones though. I wasn't trying to cheese my way to the crown at the start of a new campaign, nor trying to get it fast by bombing on a temporary mayhem campaign. Here I was, on my main campaign, trying to play the long game, aiming to be consistent enough to chip away at the gap to the leader with each passing day. I set my alarm clock early so I could get an hour or two in before work, and then when work was done, I'd play again until midnight, only taking breaks to cook dinner and to feed my rabbits. I skipped the gym, barely responded to friends, and lived off of a diet of mostly instant noodles and Red Bull. It was the sort of gamer life I had abandoned after high school, but I was willing to suffer through it one more time if it meant finally getting that damn achievement out of the way. At the very least, it would make for a cool video. There was, however, what I perceived to be a problem. I noticed after a few days that nearly all other players in the top 10 were part of the same guild, a group of Swedes called Friskitarna, and they knew how to get things done. Now, I'm in a guild myself, Iron's Lights, and while they helped me get a lot of AP during this campaign, their activities are mostly confined to a few evenings a week, whereas this guild seemed to run throughout the day, forcing me to try and keep up while playing solo or in duo. It must have been pretty awkward for them at one point, uh, with me showing up at the same places as they did, trying to help them flip keeps and resources, as there was nothing else to do on the map at the time. Still, I reckon that it would be tough for me to keep up with them if they decided to commit to Emperor for the rest of this campaign. I was a Stampler, not a Bomber or an epic 1vx Dragonite, so it was difficult for me to generate AP during off hours and get ahead that way. On the bright side, they did not seem to be an unfriendly bunch. They were nice in zone chat, played the objective and generally did not strike me as a bunch of tryhards who'd pluck my amp attempt just for a laugh. So on the second Saturday of the campaign, about one and a half weeks into the grind, I decided to contact one of them and simply ask if they were planning to keep at it for the rest of the campaign. The player I contacted was very friendly and told me they'd abandon the campaign to give others a shot at becoming Emperor, though they couldn't tell me when that would be. On the one hand, this gave me a tremendous morale boost because I finally knew that my efforts had not been in vain. If I kept playing like I had been playing, I would very likely get Emperor. On the other hand, my old doubts made plays for new ones. What if they abandon the campaign near the end and I have no time left to crown myself? What if I get overtaken by another, non-affiliated player in the meanwhile? In about a week, I would have a super busy work week and I would not have time to play for more than a few hours per evening. So, motivated by both hope and fear, I decided to turn it up a notch and I just did not log off for the rest of the day, playing from 11am until well after midnight. The next day, I woke up at 8am and continued grinding. At this point, I did everything I could to get AP. I zerged, I pv doored, I teamed up with people in zone chat to flip resources on a completely dead map, and for about half an hour I even resorted to repairing keeps. Anything it took to keep the AP flowing, I did. And that Sunday, around 2 or 3 p.m., I'd done it. I was number one on the leaderboard, the end was in sight. But not quite. The other factions were really strong at the time, while AD was seemingly enjoying a siesta. A crowning seemed far away, and I might even have to wait until the next morning before AD could take all the ring keeps. I just had to keep pushing and make sure I remained at the top of the leaderboard, preferably with a comfortable enough gap to make up for my work-related absence the next morning. After getting about 80k AP clear at the top of the leaderboard, Frisky Tarna started to log on for their afternoon run. I was actually happy to see them as AD always seemed quite a bit stronger whenever they were present. Just a little while later, as the map was slowly starting to turn yellow again, I found myself by their side at Harlan Outpost. And then something amazing happened. They sent me a group invite and told me they would try and help me get crowned Emperor, as they felt I deserved it. 
This was something they didn't have to do, as they could just as easily have perceived me as some kind of annoying leecher trying to take away their toys, so I was usually thankful that they even attempted this. And I say attempted because even with the help of this group, it was gonna be tough. Both DC and EP were present in significant enough numbers to pose a threat. But on we went, taking ring keeps while also luring enemy factions away with diversions. Slowly, the circle around the Imperial City began to close until only one keep remained, Fort Aleswell. As soon as the flag of Chalmond Keep had flipped, we did a mad dash towards Aleswell, passing by Blicker's outpost at full speed in a desperate attempt to secure my crown on this increasingly hostile map. Before we even reached the main gate, two other ring keeps went under attack, one by DC and one by EP. We had to siege fast, and we did. We barged into the outer gate. After what seemed like mere seconds, the inner gate fell too. All that we needed to do was cap both flags and hold them. As we raised a yellow banner on the back flag, more and more DCs started to pour in. They came from all angles. Main gate, side doors, from above. And with the first flag capped halfway, I noticed my group members started to die. Yet more DC came, until I too died on the first flag. That one damn flag stood between me and my crown. I could only think of one word, and it wasn't pretty. But there was no time to reflect on this disappointment, as we had to keep things from becoming even worse. Two ring keeps had gone under attack, and should they fall, then the momentum would be lost, and we might not be able to make this happen tonight. Fortunately, while AP was gaining in strength, there were still too few of them online to resist a decisive 80 charge, and we quickly pushed them back into their home territory. Blue Road Keep held. In a similar fashion, all of the DC swarming towards Aleswell had divided their faction enough for us to quickly retake Nickel and Fort Ash with the help of the other AD online. As we took the flag of Ash Lumber, the road towards Aleswell lay open again, but we faced the same problem as before. If all of DC would turn up at the keep, then there'd be a good chance they might wipe us on the flag like 20 minutes before. I took it upon myself to contact another group that I knew was online, Terminal Fluffy Bunnies, to ask them to tag the DC Fort Blade Mist. Not only would this cut off reinforcements from Aleswell, it would also force DC players to choose between preventing an AD Emperor and defending their home keeps. And so it happened that soon after we tagged Aleswell, Glade Mist lit up. Our siege of Aleswell felt familiar. We barged in the outer gate and soon after we breached the inner gate as well. I expected DC to pour in from all sides as before, but as the flag started to turn, it remained quiet. Sure, there were a couple of defenders, but no one to pose a real threat this time. Finally, Aleswell turned yellow and there it was, Emperor. A new costume was unlocked, my attribute bars exploded, I got a bunch of XP and a new fancy title was waiting for me in the scroll down menu. I'd actually done it, I was Emperor. So while taking a breather back at the base, wearing my Emperor costume and enjoying a beer, after having played non-stop for 10 hours straight since 8 o'clock in the morning, I can't help but ask myself the question, was it all worth it? After all, I didn't need this to prove to anyone that I'm a good player. I don't even think I'm that good, and this achievement won't do much to change that perception. I know absolute self-confessed potatoes who have the achievement, so it's not like it's even super prestigious. And yet, I think it was worth it, because what I like about titles like Emperor and Grand Overlord is that, while they are cumulative and do not really represent skill, they do all have a story behind them. Did someone get it in under 50 or in their main campaign? Did they get lucky or did they grind for 30 days and push for Emperor in a last ditch effort on the final campaign day? Did they get it years ago or do they still play? To me, that's the charm of former Emperors and Empresses. They all have a story to tell. That's also why I'm so proud of this achievement. I got it one and a half weeks into my main campaign, playing my own build on a class that isn't even very good at the moment. I made a lot of friends along the way too, so while I spent much of my time alone, not even telling anyone I was going for Amp, it still feels like a group effort. Even the crowning played out like a Hollywood script, where I got one last taste of defeat before claiming that sweet, sweet victory. I even got to play as Emperor a bunch of times throughout the following week, which made for an amazing power fantasy that I'm glad I was able to experience. In the end, it's a great story, and a story that I wanted to share in this video. I do have to be honest, this experience was at times stressful and boring. It really takes a lot of perseverance to continue grinding, 
even though you're half a million AP behind and the player ahead of you is also active the entire day. But once I had the confidence that I could do it, there was just no turning back and it made for one of the most fun and rewarding campaigns I've played in two years. Will I ever attempt this again? With account wide achievements, there'd be little point to it and it is tempting to say never again. But I already thought never again before the start of this campaign, so I guess I'm bad at predicting the limits of my own sweatiness. I'm sure that if an opportunity ever arises again, I will try to reclaim my crown. But this time, it will be with the confidence that I can do it, and with the knowledge that it doesn't really matter if I don't do it. So, what next? I've been playing ESO since January of 2017, and even since then, I've always set personal goals to try and work towards from big achievements to little feats that allow me to defy my own expectations. For now though, it feels like I've sort of completed the game. I still have the ambition to get one more of my characters to max alliance rank, but that's just a time investment that should take care of itself within one or two more main events. Beyond that, I guess it's like that South Park episode where they grind World of Warcraft until one day they reach their goal and they can finally enjoy the game. Jokes aside, I do believe there's some value in playing a game hardcore at first, so you can play it casually later. I've achieved most of my goals in ESO and can afford to be less concerned with performance issues and wild changes to the meta. Perhaps I can even make more ESO fashion videos again. They didn't lie when they said fashion is a true endgame. So what's your story? Did you ever attempt to get Emperor? Did you get it? How did your first grounding play out? I'd love to hear your story, so let me know in the comments below. A big thank you goes out to Swedish meatball guild Friskitarna for helping me so much during this campaign to my friend Premek for standing by my side, to Tamriel Fluffy Bunnies for the help through my first crowning, and to Iron's Lights for helping me defend my crown a bunch of times, and to Lustrak for holding my hand.